Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Artanian TV. Another quick update here today. Now, this was done a while ago, and it's pretty good, but not taken from the highest quality image. Um, and it's a bit dark. I had to darken it quite a lot to get some of this facial detail to come out. Um, and unfortunately, when you do that, you lose other details. So what I did is I basically got some better quality images and enhanced them. I didn't darken it so much because I was trying to look at this structure here. Now this structure here is some kind of entrance or something on the front of the Sphinx. And you can actually see, because I didn't darken it so much, you can actually see that there's a window on it. You can see the edges here coming down and it's got this dark slot type window on it as well. So this is some kind of structure, right? Intelligent structure built onto the front of the giant sphinx. Now you can see here that I haven't darkened it anywhere near as much as that previous one I showed you just a minute ago. Let your eyes adjust to the luminosity. Now the, the body of it's quite bright and is made of quite bright stone, kind of limestone material, so it's quite reflective. But what you can see here is a bit more detail than we've ever seen uh, because I was very careful with this and I took it very steadily and, 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 and enhanced it really, really slowly and carefully. And you can actually see what looks like more hair or headdress detail coming down here. Right to here, look. This looks like long hair, but it may be the headdress that's eroded. And you can see eye detail. Bold patch. So this is probably a, a man. It depicts some kind of king or leader, perhaps. Um, and a rather big nose. Um, not much mouth detail, but there's quite a dark shadow below the mouth there. And a sort of roundish chin. And you can actually see the eye detail in this. And this only, this level of detail only comes out if you get the high quality PDS images of this particular spot. And you won't get it from the browse images uh, unless you know how to treat them. You will never get this anywhere close to this sort of level of detail, really, because the browse images are compressed and they've got these lines going through it. And when you enlarge and, and enhance the image, it adds distortion. So I, I was very careful with this to use an image of the highest quality possible so that there was almost no distortion in the image and pixelation and that kind of thing. And you can actually see the eye quite clearly and you can see the other eyebrows sticking out here. Now this is detail that wasn't quite shown before in my previous updates, but it is detail, the, the detail is there. You can just about make out the eye there and just about make out the eyebrow here. And this is a bit fuzzy and the edges are, are blurred because this was taken from a slightly lower res brows image, but this one is a much higher quality, clearer, and more realistic looking image because it's basically higher quality. You can actually see the structure on the back here and then what looks like a wing perhaps. So this may actually represent a flying hybrid rather than a, a lion hybrid, sort of human hybrid. Um, this looks to me like a wing. Other people have mentioned this. This looks like a wing structure here. So this might have been some kind of flying god or something that they, they worshipped on Mars um, many thousands of years ago. Um, this could be a folded wing. Very interesting. But what what I thought was tantalising was this, this hatch here. Now, you can't see it in amazing detail, but this is the best detail anyone's got from this so far. So there we are. Look at the detail. Look at the eye detail. We've got these, what look a bit like sideburns coming around, but these may be sort of um, bony parts to the face, which may mean that what we're looking at here is some kind of reptilian. In some of the other images of this, you can see these bony kind of protrusions coming out of the cheekbone here around the side. Now you can also see them in the other one, probably a little bit more. Let's go back over here. They're a bit harder here. You can see them there coming across. Now that isn't a human bone structure. If those are bone structures, or bony structures. Um, you can also see from here, this is the back side view, and you can see them here, these lines here, these dark lines. Now, this is either some kind of headdress or helmet, perhaps, or 
this is bone, which may mean that this was a reptilian and had these bony protrusions on the side of the face. Now, I have found lots of reptilian skulls on the surface, and a lot of them do have these strange bony kind of parts to their face, and some of them have very bony parts on top of their head as well, like bony ridges. So this may be, but I'm not going to say for sure either way because this isn't really close enough. This, this was taken from miles away, but the, 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 um, the rover zoomed in quite a long way here. So we're seeing this from a long way back, and it focused on this ridge line here, looking at this load of rocks here. And uh, the people at NASA didn't look at the image very carefully and didn't remove this from the background. Now, had they had spotted this and realised what it was, they would have probably removed this completely and just pasted over it with fake sand. But they didn't even see it. So I really do wonder if they're even censoring the images. I don't, I don't think they are to a large extent. I'm sure they do, and I have shown in the past where they've blatantly put fake sand over things and not even blended the sand properly with the surrounding sand. And you can see the join, and you can see the grain doesn't match up and everything. And here, they left it in completely. So I really don't think most of these images are censored. I think some of them are, but I think 90% of them aren't. Because if, 90, if they were 100% censored, I wouldn't have found so many things over the last seven or eight years. There are literally almost getting on for 850 videos on my channel and most of them, I'd say about 800 of them, are Mars videos of this area. And I found thousands of things, including this thing is about two to 300 feet long. I think the main part of it here, from here to here, it's about 200 feet. But if you count this part here, the platform it's on, it's more like 300 feet. Okay, it's, it's enormous. And they missed it. So are, are the people that that's a stupid? Probably not. Are they leaving things in? Yes, they are. They must be. And you can see it here from the other view. This is much brighter as well, because this is the backside view. And there, there are links on all these things. So you can click on the link, and it will take you to the video um, as well. And it, there's links in the description here to the various videos. So it links to a couple of videos here. One of them is the first one I uploaded from years ago, my initial video. But there's also a link to the one with the multiple angles. That's the one I recommend. Multi-angles video here. Giant 200-foot Sphinx on Mars, part two, multi-angles. That's the one to watch because it shows this from all the angles. It, it showed up in dozens of photographs. Some of them closer up like this and some of them further back, but some from further to the right and some further to the left. So we can see it from the, the back, the side, and the front. So it's definitely a Sphinx. It's definitely there. And there's also links to um, a bunch of the newspaper articles here that it was in. This is only some of them. It was in hundreds when I found this. And funny enough, this is probably what got me censored uh, by whoever runs YouTube. Because literally about a week or so after this went viral and it was in all the newspapers, like the Huffington Post and everything. And it was even in like the New York Times and stuff like that. Once it was in all those big newspapers in America, suddenly my channel views dropped dramatically and uh, slowed right down by about 80%. And has been kind of trickling along ever since. I do, I do get the occasional um, viral video here and there, which I always did, but my general views are down considerably on what they used to be back then when I was finding and uh, getting these published in the press. And now, pretty much, it's almost impossible for me to get anything published in the press. They don't want to print it. They do occasionally, but it's not as much as they used to. So it looks like I've been blacklisted by the mainstream media and by uh, shadow banned partly by, by um, YouTube, because basically I'm getting less views now than I was four or five years ago when I had only a fraction of the subscribers. I'm now on 40,000. Back then, I was on about eight or nine, I think, when this came out, less than 10. So that goes to show that um, it's easy to censor a channel. They don't actually block your channel completely, but what they do is they limit how many people see your stuff on the feed, okay? That's all they have to do. Uh, they also, 
people like this, they also do it with things like Facebook and, and uh, stuff like that as well. So there we are. But check this out. I mean, th there's a whole set of gigapans here um, and they're all linked up to the videos. And uh, there's one of my favorites is this one, um, which was also a, a video that was censored. This one here, because basically when you show stuff clearly, people kind of freak out about it. They don't mind it if it's some kind of slightly dubious looking rock that looks a bit like something. But when you have something this defined and clear, it scares people higher up in the echelons of power who want to keep a lid on these things, especially when they're going to be sending so many missions to Mars, like we are now, and colonizing Mars, okay? They don't want people to think that there's stuff there because they don't want to freak people out. There are big tech companies at play here uh, who've got a lot of influence. They're sending a lot of stuff and, and, and spending a lot of money and time getting ready to colonize Mars. And uh, this will be happening in the next couple of decades. I, I absolutely guarantee you it will. Um, and they want to keep a lid on this. And also I think people like Elon Musk want to, want to actually find a lot of these artifacts and bring them back and sell them on Earth or keep them in his own private collection. When you're as rich as he, there's nothing you can buy on Earth, really, that you don't already have. And the only, thing you can, the only things you can get which other people don't have, which gives you exclusivity, is to get alien artefacts. That's what I think he's up to. He wants alien artefacts. He wants art, treasure, gold, statues. And he wants to, he'll probably set up his own museum and charge people a fortune to go and visit it. This is probably what's going to happen. Um, now, I'd be quite happy to curate a museum like that because I know where everything is. I've listed everything. I've mapped everything. Um, but once I get all my maps up, all my anomaly maps, I, I will have probably the most extensive anomaly map collection in the world um, because I've just found so many things. And I, I can point to them, tell you what they are roughly. And... Basically, I've got them all mapped out and I've updated everything. And I've, I have a, an extensive collection. A lot of things which I haven't published, but most of them I have. Here's another reptilian one that, which um, has these kind of bony ridges on its head. You see here? So what we may be seeing on the giant sphinx on the, on the, on the cheekbone are sort of bony ridges like this thing has, just here. Okay. That's what we might be seeing in that giant sphinx. So it may represent a reptilian. And I do wonder whether the original sphinx on Earth, the giant sphinx on Earth, may have also been a reptilian initially, and it was recarved to a human, more, much more human-looking face later on. There's been a lot of speculation about it, and it has been recarved at least once or twice um, and damaged. So it may well have represented even the same person as this initially. Okay, that's speculation. I can't prove it, but it is possible. And that's maybe why the powers that be are reluctant to tell us exactly how old it is. They probably know, uh, but they, they, they're still trying to maintain that it's re relatively recent, when in fact it's very, very old indeed. Uh, it's probably more like seven or 8,000 years old, possibly 25,000 years old, and goes back to a civilization which may have come from Mars or at least been communicating and possibly going to Mars to and fro. We don't know. So there are serious um, implications from this because basically when people find out that there's a, a, a civilization on Mars or was a civilization on Mars, it will change their outlook. And uh, I, think, I think the powers that be are, are paranoid about people gaining this knowledge because they want to keep it for themselves, control it, and steal all the goodies that are up there, all the gold and artifacts and everything else, and keep it for themselves. This is the closest detail you're ever gonna see of this, probably, because the rover is never gonna go back here. It's miles away from here now, but you can actually see eye detail here, long nose, not a lot of mouth details, a bit, a bit blurry there, but this is in shadow, so you can just about make out a bottom lip, and you've got the bony, protrusions along the side of the cheekbone which may be plaited hair like sideburns or something like like some of the Babylonian sphinxes have 
Or, like I said, bony ridges. It's a humanoid, but not a human like you or I. So there we are, and you can see those ridges probably a bit more clearly here. See that? These dark lines. But it's got a huge bulbous kind of eyelid. Um, and if we go to this one, it probably shows even more the eyelid. This isn't very well enhanced, this one. This is from a lower quality image, but you can see how bulbous that eye, eyelid is there. Really bulbous. And you can see the ridges coming round. But that may be part of the headdress. We don't really know. Um, and this one's a bit blurry, but darker. But the, the real thing I wanted to show you was that, that hatch in the structure here. You can see the structure coming down. And a little dark window. Very interesting. And as I've said before, this I would imagine would contain records in here. Um, possibly going back many thousands or even millions of years. Perhaps chronicling the cataclysm on Mars or something like that. So this would be one place I would send another rover to. Or humans. I would send humans here to investigate in here and have a look inside. I would imagine this is full of art, possibly treasure, and a wealth of information. And up on the mountain here, I would imagine some of these structures up here would also contain records of what happened on Mars and our possible ancestors. Okay? So check that out, check that one out, check the others out. There's lots to see here. There will be a main link to all these in the description below, as usual. I will see you soon.